On Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 54, we're going to sing songs with frogs, learn about a Celtic guitar master, and check in with our frontline reporter from St. Louis. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 54. Acoustic Tuesday is the show where you can learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best and very boldest acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I share with you my guitar geek list for the week, which contains items that as a guitar geek, you absolutely need to know about. But before I dive into the list today, we've got a little bit of Acoustic Tuesday tradition to tend to, and that of course is guitar geek trivia. Here is your guitar geek trivia question. In November 2017, one of Bob Dylan's acoustic guitars was sold at auction. It happened to fetch nearly $400,000. Which of his guitars was auctioned? Was it A, a Martin D28, B, a Gibson J45, C, a Martin Triple O45, D, a Gibson L00? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 54. Cheers for you, cheers, cheers to you, and thank you for being here. Uh, we are not alone, of course, because we are joined by none other than Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first Mr. Olympia himself, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how you doing today, Noah? Doing great, Tony. Feeling great. Yeah? Yep. What's feeling... on uh, What's on tap for your workout today? Um, actually, Tuesday right now is a rest day oh it's a rest day okay um, okay however i have plans of doing some uh gymnastic strength training stretching on the off days during oh, the week oh so okay. yeah okay. I'm, feeling, I'm feeling pretty good good that limber you up and you could do like 14 fret stretches when you're done with those that's uh, good strength training exercises you could do a guitar aerobics video uh, yeah maybe should i could get some leg warmers leg warmers and some of the um uh, just kind of perm my hair out. Just go straight up. Uh, uh, what were some of the? Uh, well, Richard Simmons, I could really do. That's just a whole nother detour. We probably yeah. don't have to deal yeah. with right now. Uh, <laughs> shall we dive in for the day? <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Well, what came into the mailbag just uh, after last week's episode of Acoustic Tuesday is actually my first item today. Now, I am traditionally one of those guitar players that well. Once I find something that works, in the case of a guitar pick, I don't really like trying other things. You know, I'm kind of I'm I'm the guy that likes my coffee black, and I don't have frappuccinos, mochaccinos, or chopa fropa lattes, or whatever they are. I'm just kind of a regular routine guy. So when I found the Dunlop Altex Sharp pick, uh, I immediately fell in love with it, and I thought this is the pick for the rest of my life. And it was that way until Acoustic Tuesday started. And then I thought, well, I've got to try out other picks and let people know what they're all about. So in the last year or so, I've tried a ton of different picks. I've gotten turned on to blue chip picks, and I really, really enjoy those, uh, amongst many, many other picks. And this particular pick that came into the mailbag is one that I think you'll really enjoy, especially if you like the vibe of the Dunlop uh, Altex Sharp pick. Now, Ernie Ball is a company that I think is most associated with the electric guitar. I mean, they've got uh, uh, volume pedals. I think they've got a whammy pedal. They've got uh, chords. And of course, they've got a whole lineup of strings. They're infamous slinky strings. But they also have some acoustic strings as well. That's besides the point. We're actually going to look at those in some future episodes of Acoustic Tuesday. But uh, they just launched the series of picks, the Ernie Ball Prodigy picks. Now, these picks I ordered because they looked just like the Dunlop Altex uh, Sharp 2.0 picks that I love. And I thought, I gotta try these picks out. Now, uh, just so you know, in terms of what they offer with these picks, in terms of options, they have a two millimeter pick and a 1.5 millimeter pick. And it comes in two different shapes of each thickness. You've got the standard size, which is kind of your standard teardrop guitar, uh, guitar pick, and what they call the mini size. Now, in terms of what I like, here's, here's what I found when I opened up these picks. I'm grabbing one of the mini ones right now. Um, I tried the mini ones, and they're pretty tiny, 
uh, compared to the standard ones. And I wanted to love the mini one, but I just didn't. It was too small for me. But if you happen to be one of those players that likes like a smaller jazz type pick, I think the mini would be one that uh, you should definitely check out or at least put on your radar to try out. I preferred the standard and its profile was damn close to the Dunlop uh, Altex Sharp pick. But what I liked about this particular pick is its edge, or the treatment of the edge, I should say. It comes with a pretty, what I'll call an aggressive bevel on it. And it comes to a pretty uh, a pretty sharp point. So in terms of uh, getting used to it, I, I was comfortable almost immediately because it really, really mimics the Dunlop pick that I like. Now the material is different though because this material is Delrin and Altex picks are obviously Altex. So what I've noticed is that the Altex produces uh, a little bit of a warmer tone than this Delrin. I think because of the bevel and the sharp point, these, these picks definitely pull out an articulation, a brilliance, a, a crispness, if you will, uh, out of your guitar. What I really noticed was I actually tried, I tested the Prodigy pick against a blue chip pick. Now the blue chip pick gives me this nice warm fat tone with clarity. And the Prodigy pick in comparison gave a much more crispier attack, um, and a little bit less body. So if you have a guitar that maybe has an inherently muddy tone, uh, using a pick like this would certainly clean it up and, and allow each string to speak clearly. But definitely a pick that I wanted you to be aware of. There's more details about this pick if you go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT54. You'll be able to click on the full review, uh, check out all the nitty gritty details of that pick. And also um, there's a link down there if you wanna check it out and um, buy some picks. And remember any purchase you make from Acoustic Life.tv, those are affiliate links. And for, for any purchase made through those affiliate links, uh, Amazon sends us a little percentage of that purchase, and we pass that percentage directly on to Guitars for Vets. So just by trying out new picks and things like that, uh, you support a fantastic organization. So check out those Ernie Ball Prodigy picks. Uh, it, was a welcome, it was a welcome item in the mailbag. Now, whether you have just started watching Acoustic Tuesday, maybe this is your first episode or you have been watching for a long time, we of course want to know what you think about the show. So please in the comments below, let us know and please include where you're tuning in from. It's so cool to see how many guitar geeks unite and from where we are uniting guitar geeks. It's pretty pretty darn cool. We've got uh, representation all across the United States, Australia, uh, um, India, South America, Canada. I mean, it's so it's so awesome. Europe, I mean, everywhere. It's, it's really great to see where you guys are tuning in from. And speaking of comments and things like that, Noah, I know you've selected some comments from a previous episode. Well, yes, I have, Tony. And would you uh, delight us with those, please? I would. <laughs> and as you will notice, several of today I have pulled from our one-year anniversary episode, mm. which uh, was a couple weeks ago now. Nice. Um, but there was quite a nice slew of them. So here we go. Uh, first one is from Deborah P., who says, Happy birthday, AT. Cheers from West Virginia. <laughs> then we have Redbeard Vagabond, um, who's also Adam, says, Great celebratory show, uh, Adam from Washington courthouse ohio oh cool is that like an actual place or is he like at the courthouse i don't know i don't know either it that, sounds that'd be uh, cool it sounds interesting that would way. be cool <laughs> people start getting specific about where they are yeah, yeah. <laughs> in line at grocery store yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> in line at the piggly wiggly yeah <laughs> all right next one is uh comes from daniel m it says happy birthday guys and uh, shout out from daniel in travelers rest south carolina cool Next is Ted R. Happy birthday, gentlemen. 52 fantastic episodes of wonderment and joy. Thank you. Awesome. Thomas C. Uh, says, uh, happy birthday to you all and many more from all your followers in Scotland. I'll raise a glass of Aberfeldy 12-year-old single malt. Cheers and many happy returns. <laughs> That's awesome. Very hope to, cool. Hope to raise that dram of scotch in person one day, Thomas. <laughs> Uh, next one comes from Robert C. Happy first anniversary, AT. Checking in from D.C., where I'm hardly at work. Uh, and the L-Y was in the parentheses, you know, hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last two coming up here. Uh, Ronnie D. So awesome that AT is 52. What a great resource that makes TAC even more special. Congrats, Tony and crew. Uh, Ron from St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, thanks, Ron. And last one comes from Keith B. from Columbia, South Carolina area. I want to say happy anniversary. Uh, continued guitar 
geekdom. Love it. It's funny, thought-provoking, and I learn something new every week. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. And there we go for comments and shout-outs today, Tony. Well, thank you, Noah. And, of course, as I mentioned before, please leave your comments below. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And uh, it's just great. It's great to hear from you all. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's super easy. Uh, just hit that red subscribe button. And then once you do that, click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification each and every time a new video gets released. And if you never want to miss an episode of Acoustic Tuesday, please click the link in the description. That will allow you get to get Acoustic Tuesday delivered directly to your email, which is nice and convenient. And most folks, I, most folks, I believe, do that. So join the ranks of Guitar Geeks, if you would, please. Uh, moving along here, uh, this next item comes from Acoustic Tuesday viewer Daniel M. And Daniel M says, this guy is a master of Celtic fingerstyle, a truly mind-blowing musician that fits in in any genre. And who is he talking about? Well, he is talking about none other than Tony McManus. And I was f originally familiar with Tony McManus years ago when I was ordering educational materials for uh, a store that I worked at. And I kept seeing Celtic fingerstyle guitar, Celtic fingerstyle guitar. And I thought, I should know this guy. And I listened to him, I dabbled a little bit, but then once I saw Daniel M's submission for this artist, I immediately was like, oh, I forgot about Tony McManus. So I need to dive in again. And dive in, we have been. Uh, what a delight to listen to. His command of the instrument is truly mind boggling. Uh, if you look at his picking hand while he plays, it's so active. It's not your traditional uh, thumb index, thumb middle kind of uh, three finger style. He's, he's, it's a very free flowing style. Sometimes he uses his index finger as like a, almost like a flat pick. Um, he does a lot of, uh, um, I want to I want to say they're like 16th notes or some sort of triplet. Noah, do you know what they are? That Celtic-y da 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 da? The right. dead, dead, dead thing? Yeah, I, yeah I, I'll, I'll call it the, the Celtic shuffle. The Celtic shuffle? Okay. Yeah, well, he does these, he does these little shuffly things uh, with his index, middle, and ring finger in like rapid succession. It's, it's fascinating to watch. So there's a tune. I'm going to do my best to pronounce this tune here. Uh, Slan Lemoy, uh, which I, I think is close. Uh, we've, Noah and I have been doing some research. <laughs> but uh, let's listen to, to, to uh, Tony play this tune, uh, Slan Lemoy, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Watching, uh, I love about Tony's playing is that it, it, his the tone that's created. It, it just it's so it's so intentional. It's you know you know that just watching him play for, even for a little bit, you know he he's so capable of you know what I would call guitar pyrotechnics. But he almost he sits back a little bit. He's more reserved and and what he plays is extremely intentional and and just. Um, just the tone he gets out of the instrument is, is fantastic. So please check out Tony McManus. He's got a bunch of albums out there. Uh, the first one I'll mention is is called Round Trip, and that's with another acoustic guitar great, uh, Beppe Gambetta. Uh, fantastic listen right there. Uh, another duo album that he's got out is Return to Kintail, which is with um, uh, awesome fiddle player uh, Alistair Fraser. Uh, also, the newest album, I believe, uh, according to my research, uh, Mysterious Boundaries, uh, that's a, that's a uh, Tony McManus solo album. And then th this next one is called, it's called The Maker's Mark. And it's a Tony McManus album, but I really truly believe that this, it, this was made for us guitar geeks because it's Tony playing, which is awesome already, but each song features a different guitar built by a different small bench luthier. Uh, so not only do you get awesome playing, but you get a sampling of some incredibly well-made 
incredible sounding instruments. So make sure to check that out. And last but certainly not least, I mentioned his educational materials earlier, but there's two in specific I'll mention. Uh, it's a series, it's called A Celtic Fingerstyle Guitar, according to Tony McManus. Uh, there's a volume one and a volume two. You'll recognize them immediately because it's a very 90s cover. It almost looks as if Tony could be a part of the, the show Friends, the TV show Friends, uh, from the cover. But anyways, that's that's not a jab. That's just me trying to remember it. Um, but he's got uh, that particular DVD series out. A uh, bunch of stuff on Dad Gad tuning, an introduction to Celtic fingerstyle guitar. I mean, it's a whole slew. So please check that out. And of course, if you want to learn more about Tony McManus, uh, go to AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT54. You'll see a link for Tony's profile, you'll see a bunch of different um, playing samples. Uh, there's some cool duets there that are, are waiting for you to be, are waiting to be heard by you. Um, so go there and check it out. And of course, please don't forget that uh, Acoustic Tuesday now has a Spotify playlist. So every artist that I feature on Acoustic Tuesday ends up on that Spotify playlist. So if you're taking a road trip, doing yard work, or just wanting to listen to some good acoustic music, it's all on there. And of course, you can access that at AcousticLife.tv. Now, uh, Noah, I'm going to check the mailbag. Yeah. We've, we've had a couple of uh, runs out to the mailbox where there's just been nothing in it. And I feared that the mail person was just skipping us. Well, I'm used to that. But <laughs> you should check the mailbag because I, I think you got something this time. Well, I did. I got two things. The first of which is a notification that my acoustic guitar subscription is overdue. Oh. So I got to get on that. Um, <laughs> As with most bills that come to me or my house, it just kind of sits unopened over on the counter for a while until I reach a panic state, mm -hmm. and then I open them all at once, and the well, panic further ensues. Well, there's so much that's digital these days. I know, I know. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a write-out-a-check kind of a guy, and stamp. That's, that's kind of how I like to operate. Yeah. So maybe this is kind of good mail. I don't know. <laughs> But I did, I did receive truly good mail. Uh, my uh, subscription to the magazine Guitarist, this is a, a UK magazine uh, that I've, I've been enjoying. Now, interesting story, I did not initially uh, subscribe to this particular magazine. I, I actually subscribed to Acoustic Magazine. Uh, and then very shortly after my subscription to that, they said, hey, um, we're not gonna do that anymore please accept the subscription to Guitarist Magazine, which I dig. It's not as acoustic focused as I love, but it's still guitar geeky, so I dig it. But guess what was included uh, with this particular issue? A little sampling of Acoustic Magazine. This, this got my wheels turning because I thought, wait a minute, I thought you guys stopped doing that. Apparently they're making it a quarterly magazine instead of each month. So that's pretty exciting. I'm excited to see that develop. This is just a... Uh, uh, what they call a, what is it, a 28-page sampler. So I'm excited to see if it has maintained its acousticness. And of course, if it does turn into a quarterly, well, I'm, I'm hopping on that train because I really dug that magazine. It was lower on ads and, and more packed full of information. So I really, really appreciate that. So that's the mailbag. Noah, what about, uh, what about your mailbag? <laughs> well, no, I think, I think all I got this week was, you know, my normal shipment of supplements. Oh, you know, right. That you, <laughs> make fun of me, supp supplements? that you make fun of me for. <laughs> I but don't. I don't. I admire, I mean, I'll say this on public record. I admire you sticking to this program. Noah's been doing this workout program. He's got the supplements. He's got the diet thing. He's got, uh, uh, he's working out down in the, in the Acoustic Life <laughs> Studios basement. And I, I admire that. I like seeing the follow through. So it's, it's cool. So cheers, Noah. I, I really do think that's admirable. Thank you, Tony. Mm -hmm. I know you really, I know you feel that way deep inside. I really, truly feel that way. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on because uh, the next the next uh, report is actually from the front lines. It's from St. Louis. We're going to hear from our friend Matt Chalka from Eddie's Guitars, and Matt, of course, is a part of the Acoustic Tuesday segment. Ask Matt. So if you have any questions about acoustic guitars, uh, builders, manufacturers, tone woods, you name it, uh, please go ahead and ask Matt in the comments. Just put hashtag Ask Matt and go ahead and ask your question. Uh, the question he got this week is really awesome, and he goes into some great, great detail. So let's hear from Matt. Hello again, friends. Matt with Eddie's Guitars coming to you, as always, from St. Louis, Missouri. Very pleased to be back with you folks again on another segment of Ask Matt here on Acoustic Tuesday. 
We've got a really fantastic question to answer today. This comes in from Vic G. This is not Vic G's first question. I actually had the pleasure of meeting Vic several weeks ago at the Acoustic Life Festival. Wonderful guy. It was really a pleasure to meet you, Vic. Thank you for the question here again. Um, he asks, we all know that the pre-war 30s and early 40s Martins and Gibsons are highly coveted and sought after by collectors and guitar enthusiasts today. If you were to travel 100 years into the future and look back at the guitars that are rolling off of various makers' factory floors today, which models would you think would be the highest coveted and sought after in the vintage instrument market and which ones do you think would produce extremely gorgeous tone after a century of aging and Vic I gotta tell you this is uh, a subject that I sort of ponder and daydream about all the time because um, you know years and years ago as you as you mentioned the the 30s specifically and even earlier and also into the early 40s um, Gibson and Martin guitars specifically are indeed very sought after um, the the Gibsons and the Martins were the two big names at that stage in high-end guitar manufacture there were a couple others Washburn uh, Larson brothers uh, and, and some others as well that are uh, wonderful guitars, but the Martin and the Gibson were the two big ones. Now, fast forward to today, it's very fair to say we live in truly the golden era, uh, specifically of manu uh, acoustic guitar manufacturing. Uh, there's just absolutely no shortage of ridiculously high quality uh, acoustic guitars being built today. So. That's, um, I, I know no matter how I answer your question here, uh, I'll be leaving somebody out, but I wanted to kind of give a few bullet points on what I think will be magnificent guitars decades from now, and ones that will indeed, I think, be very highly sought after. And the, the guitar I'm holding here is, frankly, the first uh, maker that comes to mind, Collings Guitars down out of uh, Austin, Texas. Um, you know, Collings, uh, since their origin has made just wonderfully high quality guitars both in their fit and finish their build quality itself and the voicing of their guitars i think years down the road their guitars will be very highly sought after not only from a quality standpoint most certainly from a sound standpoint in fact i've heard um, uh, other builders um, really state, you know, I think the calling stuff years down the road will really uh, have quite an enormous voice and, uh, and you know, for recording purposes, for playing live purposes, will we'll certainly be sought out. Um, some others that certainly come to mind, I think Dana Bourgeois will be right up there with Collings. Um, you know, those are a couple kind of the relatively traditionally built guitars in terms of their aesthetic and styling and everything. Um, in terms of some of the, you know, what I would deem as more contemporary style builds, I think Kevin Ryan will really be a, a forerunner years down the road looking back at what he's making today. I, I think Kevin Ryan has just a tremendous amount of acoustic guitar innovations from his forearm bevel that he's very well known for, uh, his acoustic flutes, just the voicing inside his guitars. Uh, I think will all um, be be prominent in the future and uh, ha have really been influential even today amongst other builders that use some of his similar innovations but with their own spin on them. Um, one builder that perhaps to a lot of folks is a little bit more uh, off the beaten path that, that I, I certainly want to mention is Irvin Samaji. Uh, if you're not fil uh, familiar with Irvin, I urge you to get on your computer, do some searching. Irvin is probably most well known for his collection of books uh, that he has written um, to instruct guitar building itself. Uh, his, his book collection is called The Responsive Guitar. Uh, a, a lot of his uh, clientele are, are usually finger style players and uh, the responsive guitar sort of, I guess, implies that a little bit. Many, many uh, really highly regarded builders uh, have heavily subscribed to his writings in terms of the, the voicing process of the soundboards of guitars, as well as other, you know, numerous aspects of, of the guitar building process itself. Irvin has also um, had many, and I do mean many, apprentices 
um, for building who have gone on to, uh, you know, be, again, regarded as some of the greatest guitar makers alive today, along with Irvin. Uh, again, that's more kind of in the contemporary end of things. You're not going to be finding, you know, Martin and Gibson inspired guitars from some of these builders, um, but but certainly incredible instruments with um, with their kind of their own contemporary voice to them. So, again, I know I'm leaving a, a lot of builders out of this conversation right now, but. Uh, I wanted to kind of touch on the several that I think will be very prominent years and years down the road from now, again, from not only a value standpoint, uh, but from a, uh, from, a, from a sound standpoint, almost most importantly, I think. Uh, so, Vic, thank you for your question. Again, it's something I kind of think about all the time, just sort of geeking out on and uh, appreciate you sort of putting that into words and allowing me to kind of put, put that into words, too. So. If you have a question of your own, I would urge you to, down in the comments below, all you have to do is put hashtag Ask Matt, put your question below, and I, you know, whether it's, um, you know, what, what kind of picks do you like best, or, you know, what do you think of this bracing pattern, or, or what, what kind of top wood should I be looking at for my playing style, i um, be happy to, to address any questions you folks might have in a future Acoustic Tuesday episode. And uh, thanks again to Tony, Noah, and Levi. We'll see you guys next time. All right, it's always great to hear from our friend Matt, especially a question like that, which has him blasting into the future and, and looking into his guitar geek crystal ball and figuring out which guitar manufacturer is going to be the most sought after, uh, you know, since we are in kind of a golden era right now. But uh, again, thank you, Matt, for, for handling that question and all the questions. Matt is a wealth of acoustic guitar knowledge. And uh, as guitar geeks, well, we need to lean. We need to lean on on wisdom-filled folks like Matt. So again, in the comments below, if you have a question for Matt, put hashtag Ask Matt, and uh, he will address your question on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Now, Noah, you do have some small wins. You need to spread some positivity yes, throughout I do. the land of guitar geeks. I consider it my duty to do so. Well, I think you should uh, proclaim right here, right now, that it's time to uh, talk about some small wins. Let's do it. All right, Tony, welcome to this corner of small wins. <laughs> <laughs> so first small win comes from Johnny L. Uh, small win, finally a trivia question I immediately knew the answer to. <laughs> Very good. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Next one comes from Gordon S., um, who also adds on a happy birthday to Acoustic Tuesday. Mm. Um, congratulations for a full year of fun and information. Um, his small win is being able to celebrate that with us. Awesome. Well, thanks for celebrating with us. Appreciate it. Next one comes from Daniel M. It's a small win. After 12 years of marriage, I finally got the go-ahead to buy the dream guitar. <laughs> now, I still don't have the money, but I got the wife's permission. <laughs> hey, I mean, you know what? That sometimes takes longer than collecting the funds. That's true. You That's know. true. Definitely don't go the route that I went on my, not my most recent guitar purchase, the one before that, when I got the Mule, and it just kind of showed up with a new guitar. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I said, oh, I've had this for a couple weeks now. And I kind of got the, you what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Didn't you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Tony, our last uh, small win of the day comes from Deborah P., who says, small wins... Picked the guitar back up after about 20 years. Oh. Bought myself a new one and loving it. Thanks for the inspiration. Hell yeah, way to jump back in. That's awesome. That's so cool. Congratulations. Yeah. And there's our small wins for today. Well, thanks for sharing those, Noah. And uh, thank you all for sharing those with us. If you have a small win that you want to share, write in the comments below. Just put hashtag small win and go ahead and describe your small win. We need these small wins for positivity in our guitar journey. It's so cool to band together once a week and be like, hey, we're all doing pretty good. You know, I changed my strings for the first time. I went to a killer show. I got back into guitar after 20 years. That's an awesome win. We, it's so great to hear about those. So please share your small wins below. Now I have, I have two small wins that I wanna share. One is completely not guitar related. Okay. And the second is very much guitar related. Okay. So we'll start with the not guitar related one. I did get a new tattoo uh, two weeks ago now. I guess almost two weeks ago now, and it's uh, it's these little gals right here on my arm, the shine, the twins from The Shining, the Grady twins, 
and uh, got him in a real creepy skull-like fashion. And my small win is that I've never had numbing spray on any of my other tattoos. So she was doing the, she was doing the outline, didn't have any numbing spray on it. And uh, I thought, eh, this isn't the best area. It's a little sensitive in there. And then after she finished the outline, she went to do the shading, but she sprayed me with numbing spray. I didn't feel anything. Whoa. I just laid there and I was like, are you doing anything? You know what hurt the most? She was like wiping off the ink. Anyways, that's one of my small wins. The second, <laughs> the second small win I wanna share is one that we've actually all participated in. Because, well, here's the reason why. When you purchase anything from AcousticLife.tv, there's uh, affiliate links on pretty much everything that I review where you can buy things from Amazon. Well, as uh, the affiliate links work, essentially we get a small percentage of each sale from those affiliate links. And we take the money that's generated from that and pass it directly to Guitars for Vets. So I'm happy to report that uh, we have a small win here in that uh, I have our donation announcement from the month of July, uh, just last month. So let's see, um, for the month of July, through AcousticLife.tv, $331.06 was donated to Guitars for Vets, which is pretty awesome. That's equal to about a little over one person going through the program. And it's, it's kind of cool because as I look through all these donation amounts, you know, we had our first month from uh, AcousticLife.tv was $375. Our second month was right around $450. And then also in June, we had the Acoustic Life Festival, which was nearly $11,000. And then this month, another $331 is going to Guitars for Vets. When you divide that by $200 per person that goes through the program, that's a good chunk of people. So congratulations, Guitar Geeks. That's an awesome small win that we all can celebrate because you are very much a part of this. If you've bought something on AcousticLife.tv, you're a part of it. If you've shared the show, you're a part of it. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you're a part of it. So thank you and uh, congratulations on an awesome small win that's helping Guitar Geeks unite worldwide. Uh, and speaking of, of sharing the show, uh, please share this show with your Guitar Geek friends. It's as simple as sending them a link to AcousticLife.tv. Say, hey, check this out. Sending them a link to your favorite uh, uh, segment of a show or whatever the case may be. Please share it with your Guitar Geek friends. The whole notion is to get as many Guitar Geeks to unite every single Tuesday as we possibly can. And part of that is knowing that you're a Guitar Geek. And Noah, yes, how do you know that you're a Guitar Geek? Well, one way we know, Tony, is that by a, having AT viewers make a comment about it at home. Correct. Or making a comment about it in the comments. From well, their home. From their home or <laughs> wherever place they're watching. Or, or the courthouse. Or, or the <laughs> courthouse or the Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> yes, we do have a couple you know your guitar geeks. Nice. So the first one comes from James M. who says, You know your guitar geek when you wish you wouldn't have sold that or those guitars you mm. used to own. So true. Gosh, yeah. that's true. And you made a comment about that, which is why he was saying this, yeah. as you have mentioned before. Yeah. There's a couple and, on my list. <laughs> and our second one comes from Adam, who says, You know your guitar geek when... You contemplate shipping your guitar to Tony so you can hear him play Last Steam Engine on it because that's how you judge a guitar sound from watching hours of Tony's reviews. So, there that's you go. It's a good benefit of playing the same song on every guitar. You kind of get a sense of, of what it sounds like. I know. It's, ge it's like genius. It's genius. We can genius. thank Levi for that one. Yes, we can. Thank you, Levi. <laughs> Is that it? That's it for today. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing those, Noah. And of course, if you want to make a comment in the comments, which is where you make comments, uh, go ahead and finish that statement. You know you're a Guitar Geek when. Uh, we love hearing from you guys on that because there's been some really funny stuff. A lot about picks in the, in the laundry. A lot of those. A lot about um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. buying another guitar and things like that. So, But yeah, please, please share your thoughts with on that. Share your thoughts with us on that. And speaking of Guitar Geeks, I've got two guitar collections, uh, lovingly referred to as guitar signals, that I wish to share with you. The first one comes from Chris A. and his sons Liam and Marshall. They're from Phoenix, Arizona. Now, a quick note on this before we get into the guitars. If you look at the shirts they are all wearing, 
This is a true Guitar Geek family because we've got a Guitar Arsenal shirt, there's a Larivee shirt in there, and I believe Chris is wearing a Chicago Music Exchange shirt. So they, they really showed up dressed to the hilt for this one. Uh, and as far as guitars, what we're looking at in their Guitar Arsenal is as follows. A 2001 Larivee LO3R, killer guitar by the way, an Airline Bobcat, a Martin Backpacker, an Epiphone SG Pro, that happens to be Liam's guitar, a Gretsch Jim Dandy, a homemade cigar box guitar project, a Fender Baja Telecaster, a Fender Stratocaster Plus, and a 2016 Guild M20E. So I want to thank Chris, Liam, and Marshall for sharing your guitar arsenal with us. And next up, we have a guitar geek that goes by the name Yeah Guitar, which I absolutely think is is a is a high level of guitar geekery. And in his uh, uh, Hill Valley, California guitar arsenal, we've got the following: a 2017 Yamaha Billy Corgan model, a 1970 Guild D40, a 2014 Martin D35, a 2016 Gibson Les Paul Traditional, 2017 Bill Nash S63, 2016 Les Paul Goldtop, 2018 PRS Dusty Wearing, a 2002 Les Paul Classic, a Les Paul Custom R8, a 2017 Gibson Custom J45, and he's holding a, flend a Fender Flea Bass. <laughs> So I want to thank uh, all you guys for sharing your guitar arsenals with us. It's so cool to get a sneak peek into your collections. And um, I love the infusion of family and pets and all the cool pictures we've been getting lately. And if you're thinking, gosh, I have a guitar arsenal that I want to share, uh, it's super easy. You just have to grab a guitar arsenal shirt. There's a link right beneath this episode of Acoustic Tuesday. You can get your favorite color, your favorite size, whatever the case may be. And once you get that shirt, please take a picture of you with that shirt on with all of your guitars, right? And that's could in, this could include uh, family members, pets, but make sure your guitars are in there as well. Wh whomever's involved on your guitar journey. And last but certainly not least and probably the most important please submit it at acousticlife.tv in the upper menu you'll see a link that says submit and once you click on that you'll be uh, you'll be able to follow the instructions to submit the picture of your guitar song and be featured on an upcoming episode of acoustic tuesday Let's try say uh, fender flea bass like five times fast it's really hard can i try you can you can okay um here we go Fender flea bass, 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 fender flea bass. Wow, that was pretty good. You did hit a, there was a small hiccup. I know. I only tried to say it once and I said flender fee bass. Yeah. Fl <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh, so yeah, again, please share your guitar signals with us. It's always a challenge for me to read those. I feel like an auctioneer when I read those. It's, it's really fun, um, especially with the larger guitar collections. But uh, uh, we're almost nearing a close of episode 54, but I've got one more thing that I want to share with you, and that is a luthier that you absolutely need to be aware of. His name is Michael Millard, and he has uh, been building guitars under the, the name Froggy Bottom Guitars. Now, he's over on the East Coast, and Froggy Bottom Guitars, I feel like I feel like they're one of those mythical guitar companies because you don't really see them a lot in, in many shops across the country. There's a few select shops. I know Eddie's Guitars uh, carries Froggy Bottom. I was actually just on there doing research, doing research for the show. I wasn't shopping, fantasy shopping at all. No, that's not me. Uh, but seriously, Froggy Bottom Guitars are, I always felt like when I had a chance to play one, it was just a, it was a magical opportunity. Yes, because they're a little bit more rare, but also because the guitars are exquisite. I mean, I'm talking visually they're they're exquisite, but just the tone woods that Michael selects and his small staff selects for uh, the guitars are they're fine examples. I mean, the finest examples of Adirondack spruce, both in terms of not just aesthetics, but tone as well. I mean, Brazilian rosewood, Madagascar rosewood, koa, I mean, you name it. And speaking of koa, and speaking of awesome players and awesome guitars, all the stars came together for this episode because I was researching Froggy Bottom guitars, and I thought, oh, I want to check out this Froggy Bottom H12. It was a video uh, that was made by the North American Guitar over in the UK. They put out fantastic videos uh, showcasing some beautiful instruments and who happened to be playing this froggy bottom h12 it was tony mcmanus uh, so let's have a listen to uh, tony mcmanus again this time playing a froggy bottom h12 guitar <laughs> Thank you. 
and because I like to balance things out, that was a smaller bodied, almost a, a parlor sized Froggy Bottom guitar. I thought we need to hear what the bigger guitars from Froggy Bottom sound like. And upon further research, who did I find playing a Froggy Bottom SJ with a killer Adirondack top and mahogany back and sides? Our frontline reporter, Matt Chalka from Eddie's Guitars. So let's have a listen to Matt playing a Froggy Bottom SJ. <laughs> agree with me here that tonally these guitars would make any guitar geek's mouth water. I mean literally like like Pavlo Pavlovian response. You hear this guitar and you're like oh my gosh this where is this magic sound coming from? But one of the other things that I think is needs to be noted about Froggy Bottom guitars is that they pay incredible attention to fit and finish and the artistic custom customizability of, of their uh, guitars. And, and I'm talking about fine, fine details that make a huge impact. Uh, one of the ones that stands out is the heel caps that they use. Oftentimes they'll use uh, ivory and do scrimshaw on it, on the heel caps. I mean, everything from nature scenes to, um, I think there's a, a, a ram or like a bighorn sheep and then also a bobcat and lynx. I mean, there's there's a lot more than that, but just, just things that I wanted you to see to show how diverse these guitars are um, in terms of the aesthetic. You know, you usually think of aesthetic as, you know, tone woods and purfling and inlay and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the heel cap is, is one of those, those areas that I think doesn't get a lot of attention paid to it. But here, Froggy Bottom is doing that very thing. And also, the wonderful part of the guitar that we refer to as the butt wedge. Um, <laughs> the butt wedge, that's the end part that's, that's by the, uh, the strap button that's on the bottom of your guitar. Think the lower bout, right? And uh, usually that's just a nice piece of, of wood that's kind of inlaid in there, but they've actually done scrimshaw on that, again, in ivory. Really cool birds and flowers and things like that. Just a nice artistic touch on such beautiful high-end guitars. And it doesn't stop there. One of the things that stands out to me with these instruments is that uh, the, the headstock, their basic uh, froggy bottom inlay, the frog on the top, uh, done in abalone, is just a, a very striking looking headstock. But they've even taken that one step further and done engraved mother of pearl, both uh, the, the, of the frog uh, logo and also just kind of this very elegant, almost filigree looking uh, type um, uh, engraving on Mother of Pearl, which is just a nice touch. And as I mentioned before, uh, they're a custom shop pretty much exclusively. I don't know if they have a standard model. They have, of course, a lot of models that they base guitars off of, but you as the player really design the guitar to your own sound and your own liking. So uh, I would strongly recommend checking out their website. There's I mean, stories of how the name came about, stories of, of uh, Michael Millard, how he started the company from 1970 on, and how he, uh, who he, who he um, apprenticed with. I believe it was Michael Gurian uh, in New York. I'm not 100% on that. But please check out the website for more details and also the gallery of custom work that they've done. It's it's really breathtaking, fantastic work, uh, fantastic guitars being made by Froggy Bottom. And of course, if you want to learn more, just go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT54. You'll see a link for Froggy Bottom guitars. You get to look at a full write-up and all sorts of great links uh, showing off what they're good at, which is making mouth-watering guitars. Uh, so please, again, check out Froggy Bottom guitars. And that pretty much wraps up uh, Acoustic Tuesday, episode 54. I'm checking my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. I, no, I don't think I missed anything. No. I think I, I think I got her nailed, except for Guitar Geek Trivia. Yes. We need to revisit our Guitar Geek Trivia question and, of course, reveal the answer. So here was your Guitar Geek Trivia question. In November 2017, one of Bob Dylan's acoustic guitars was sold at auction. It happened to fetch nearly $400,000. Which of his guitars was auctioned? 
Was it A, a Martin D28, B, a Gibson J45, C, a Martin Triple O45, or D, a Gibson L00? Well, if you answered A, a Martin D28, you're absolutely correct. Dylan's 1963 Martin D28 sold to an anonymous buyer for $396,000 in November of 2017. This guitar holds a significant place in Dylan's personal history as well as music history in general, as it was the guitar played during the concert for Bangladesh. Dylan played it on stage next to George Harrison, Leon Russell, and all the other greats that played that concert. In addition to one of his main instruments during his Rolling Thunder review, and that was the, the I believe that was right after Blood on the Tracks when Dylan uh, just did shows in very small theaters uh, with a very select group of musicians. Uh, so a lot of cool history with this guitar. Now get this, Larry Craig, who served as Dylan's guitar repairman, put up the guitar for auction. Craig had originally purchased the D28 from Dylan in 1977 for the whopping sum of $500. So a guitar that was purchased for $500 fetched $396,000 because of the history and the mojo. That's pretty darn awesome. So that was your Guitar Geek trivia, and therein is the end of Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 54, but let's quickly take a sneak peek into next week, what's gonna happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Next week on Acoustic Tuesday, a new alloy is on the chopping block. We're gonna get a quick peek at a Guitar Geek feature-length film, and we're gonna look at an artist whose finger-style chops create magical melodies. And that, that artist was actually recommended by an Acoustic Tuesday viewer, so I'm excited to share that with you next week on Acoustic Tuesday. But until then, have an awesome day, have an awesome week, and remember to catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, for your acoustic guitar-infused fix in between Tuesdays, please go to AcousticLife.tv. There is tons of reviews, uh, interviews, Ask Matt sections, artist profiles, it's all there waiting for you. So just visit AcousticLife.tv and check out all of that stuff. So until next week, from Noah and I, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for sharing your time with us. And cheers to you, Guitar Geeks. Guitar Geeks Unite.